The last time we dropped the hammer on the Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series, the defending champions regained control with Chris Borch and Caleb Russell dominating the ATV and motorcycle proceedings. Can they keep the run alive today? Racing is next. Welcome to Racer TV's coverage of the Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Maxis. It's an AMA National Championship today, the Dunlop Limestone 100 GNCC. It's the third year we've run this event, so the riders are still learning the terrain. And we'll have the full assortment of classes as usual, ATV racing for both the sport and race quads, but also the utility machines will be out there doing battle. And of course, the bikes also. It's a banner weekend for racing in Grand National Cross Country every weekend. And the action's hot and heavy, even in our amateur classes, as you can see here. Hang on to that thing. But most of our focus, of course, will be on the pros. And that's a one in the afternoon race on Saturday for ATVs. And then our bikes on Sunday. There's Chris Borich, your defending series champion. Got the full family there ready to go. Adam McGill's fired up. Bryson Neal, one of the young kids, really looking for a breakthrough run. Chris Bithel, and the rest of the established players. Watch out also for the number two of Walker Fowler. He's got to get some wins. Looked like he might have had Boric beat at our previous round. Look out, Adam McGill. Save your energy. He's going to race for two hours. Thought Fowler might have a victory on Boric at our last event in South Carolina, but Boric, as usual, pulled it off late. Seconds. Fowler wants to get back in title one, contention. He needs to respond today, and, and we'll see if the other contenders can get in there and mix it up as well. Jason Wygant here to give you the call on NBCSN. Boy, lots of bumping in that first turn, just like we saw in the amateur division. Chris Bithel is going to grab the Derisi Racing Twin Air hole shot, and I don't remember the last time Bithel has grabbed not a hole shot, but a good start at all. But as you can see how dusty it is here in the field, it'll be very helpful to be up front. I don't think it will be as bad down in the woods to see the shade trees help uh, hold the moisture in. McGill is second, Jeff Pickens third, Fowler and Boric off to good starts also. We will race for two hours today in our ATV Pro event, but starts have become more and more critical uh, the last couple of years. Boric used to never get good starts and just pass everyone in the last lap. He has upped his game off the line. Now his buddy Bithel also on a Suzuki doing the same. Higgins, Fowler, Boric filing in right there as well. Watch number 11 there, Jay Shadron. A good story, a lot of the young kids started to move up through the amateur ranks and get closer and closer to contention for podiums, top three finishes in the pro class. But right now it's the, the big guns holding their ground. That's Bithel, McGill. They're putting some pressure now on the number eight of Pickens and they might have gotten around him, Fowler and Boric. And you can see the typical terrain here of Grand National Cross Country action. You got the ups and downs and some of the rocks. Higher speed stuff out here in the fields and the highest speeds of all. The precision Maxis tire back Suzuki of Bithel. He's getting away a bit. I think McGill here in second is trying to stay out of the dust zone. And Fowler did make that pass. He puts the NFAB and Pro Yamaha into third. And that's Bryson Neal going by there in red. Another one of the young kids starting to pick up his game. Along with Shadron here, we might be looking at a changing of the guard of this sport over the next two or three seasons. But right now, Bithel and McGill, who've been doing it well for a while, are out front. These guys raced each other a lot in the Pro-Am division, which is a notch below this. So they came through the ranks. And then Fowler, maybe the most storied amateur and youth GNCC ATV rider ever. And they're all trying to put heat on Boric as they've gotten away from him up front. Boric now has Neil behind him, Shadron also. This is Braden Henthorne, another one of the young guys. And every lap they run, battling with the veterans, I'll call them. A little bit more experience makes it easier on them the next time. This is great stuff down here. Might be dusty out in the field, but perfect soil. A little bit of rock mixed in. 
down in the low-lying areas, and obviously Bindle likes it. Although again, I have to wonder, Bindle has so little experience leading these races early, he's usually way back there, lets it all hang out, makes passes. Sometimes that gets you fired up, but at the same time, he's going to save a lot of energy. Although now he's got a challenge from McGill on the uphill. And this section, the riders cannot practice on. Wait a minute, we got a rider down. That is McGill. He has flipped it or flipped off of his machine. That is Fowler getting around him. And that's going to open the door. Whoa. He's still stuck. Oh, disaster for McGill. And this is going to allow Chris Bidwell to pour it on out front. The number four is number one so far today. Twins have notoriously been very hard on crankshafts because that big, long stroke of those two cylinders just flexes the crankshaft around. So we were seeing bearing issues. Research development people at uh, Amsoil could show us that it was likely an oil problem. And they were correct. That was the issue. Instead of having to redesign the engine, I just had to do a uh, better quality oil. Racer TD is brought to you by Amsoil. By Rocky Mountain ATD MC. And by Can Ham. You're watching Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Racing here on NBCSN. Dunlop Limestone GNCC. Chris Bindle leading the way. Walker Fowler up to second because our second place rider, Adam McGill, got stuck on a hill. So here's McGill on the comeback trail. And you can see he is motivated, really pushing it. And they have put Chris Boris, at least for the moment, not only in the rear view mirror, he's actually too far behind. If they had mirrors on these machines, they wouldn't even see him. Although the thing with Boric is objects may be closer than they appear. Until the checkered flag is out, you do not count your five time in defending Grand National Cross Country Champion out of the race. He is so strong late in these events. And you've got to feel that even though he's about 30 seconds in back of the lead trio, no panic from the champion. We got a change up here. No, it is still Bindle in the lead. Fowler and McGill have definitely tightened it up, though. Boy, that's got to be difficult. You go across these roads, it kicks up a little bit of dust, and you've got to weave the machine perfectly between the trees. You see the gap that with with Borich, such a quiet, mild-mannered guy off of the track. But deep inside, he's got a little bit of that competitive fire. You can see it if you talk to him enough. It's confidence. I don't think it goes quite to the cocky level, but that's why he doesn't panic. I don't believe at any moment he's worried that he can't get these guys when it's absolutely necessary. Usually on the last lap, he pulls some tricks. Now, obviously, passing is difficult on a cross-country track when you're running a quad that's 50 inches wide, and sometimes the trees aren't much wider than that. And I have to wonder if Boric doesn't use these early laps to pick out passing zones, and then he holds them until late in the race. We've seen it happen so many times, and Boric learned at the hands of Bill Balance, who won nine of these GNCC champions. There was a time a decade ago when Boric was the young gun, and he had to learn how to get these races late. You could go fast early, you could show everyone your speed and your fitness, but it's really a strategy game later in the event. Now, the Yamaha folks are telling Fowler to go after Bithel for the number one spot, but sometimes leading early isn't the way to do it. So we'll see Boric, calm, cool, collected back here in fourth while these lead three riders are just banging on each other. Here's the hill climb where we saw some drama a lap ago. Bithel just able to edge Fowler out. Now you see the Boric bandits there. You got people all in the woods with the Boric shirts. They're pumped. Their man has closed the gap, but we've got a four rider duel. Hand off the bars for Bithel. He might be dealing with some arm pump. You just ride tight, you get nervous early on. You hold on too tight. Your arms start to cramp up a bit. And we're into the pits. Here's a chance for all these guys to relax, at least for a moment. Goggles, gas for Fowler. Boric is through, Bindle is through. And now McGill is out as well, and he makes a pass on Fowler. Good quick pit stop. The RacingPowerSports.com, PyroDMX, 
CST tires crew getting McGill in and out early. It should put him back into second. Let's see how it sorts out here on the trail. Yes, he is in the number two spot, but Borch is right there in the hunt now. We have a four rider duel. And as much love as I'm giving the young kids, Neil Henthorn, Shadron, and the rest who have moved up. They gained some experience running with these riders for a lap or two, but it looks like the fast foursome has taken over here at the Dunlop Limestone GNCC. We'll see if Chris Bithel can hang on to the number one spot. We'll have more ATV racing in a bit, but we're gonna check in on the bikes when we return. Sometimes you come across something so different, you just have to stop and check it out. The Rocky Mountain ATV MC website has everything you need, from our huge selection of tires, ATV and UTV accessories, and OEM parts, to our online chat, customer reviews, and instructional videos. Our extensive inventory means most orders arrive in three days or less. Get low prices, quick shipping, and incredible customer service. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. And by Pan Am. Welcome back, coverage of the Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Maxxis. The Dunlop Limestone GNCC, like every Grand National Cross Country event, ATVs and dirt bikes. Caleb Russell, your defending champs, got a little win streak. Charlie Mullins needs to fend his teammate off today Try to get the points lead back, and this has been the guy, Josh Strang, closest to knocking off that KTM duo. Strang on the Rocky Mountain ATV MC, NFAB, Ampro, Yamaha. He has come close, hasn't been able to knock off the twosome on the orange bikes up front. We'll see if it changes today. Bunch of KTMs dueling in the lead for the number one spot, but watch Paul Wibley gonna sneak to the inside, and they all tangle up and get the all balls racing hole shot. Here's Strang with the Rocky Mountain ATV MC GoPro. Not a great start for him. He was in that tangle up. He's got to make some moves. Wibley, Ampro and Fab Yamaha rider leading Mullins. Wibley a great starter and a two-time series champ. Russell, a rare good start, his third already. Stuart Baylor, Jordan Ashburn, Andrew DeLong all with them. And then you got to watch for Thad Duvall. Bad start on the Morgantown Power Sports Honda, but he is on rails trying to catch these leaders. Early on, it would basically be a battle between the two KTM riders, Russell and Mullins, and the two Yamaha riders, Wibley and Ashburn. As they attack a very technical rock section here, the fans like that. Before long, well, this race would shape up like they all have, really, for the last year and a half. The FMF KTM duo, Russell and Mullins, start to get away. Now, usually, when Russell gets a good start and has the lead, he's hard to stop, but look at Mullins. Keeping the heat on, really pushing the pace, hoping to take advantage of a potential mistake, and he would get it. Here's Mullins back in the lead. Russell would have a big crash, which send him out of the top three, and from there, the 112 would try to, as they say, make hay while the sun shines. He had the opportunity to build the gap, and that's exactly what he did. Now, the rider to watch is Duvall. Here he is now. Riding that uh, high-performance Honda 250F. Able to make it work against the big 450s and 350s. He would move up to second. Now, for a little uh, moment, I thought that there was a chance Duval could maybe even challenge Mullins for the lead, but Mullins just so strong on this day. A few mistakes, feet on the pegs, despite the speed. He was riding perfectly. There you see Thad Duvall trying to run with him. But the advantage for Duvall is that he had a big gap built over everyone else. Ashburn and Russell battling, and also Wibley as well. They had a lot of ground to make up on the first and second place riders. Hearing some radio chatter here. They're trying to track these riders, and if you go to a GNCC event live, obviously it's a 12-mile track. You're not going to get to see it all, but the radios, whoa! Russell almost throws it away, hitting that log. But the fans are kept informed by the track crew radioing in reports to the series announcer, Rodney Tomlin. Now, the radio report will say that Russell has caught Wibley and passes him. Nice move, found a line to make, well, really just thread the needle. As we said in our ATV race, 
passing in the woods, not easy, but these riders study the tracks, study the lines. They stay close to the guy when they need to. Now we check out Ricky Russell. This is the XC2 division, 250cc bikes. They start on row two, and occasionally they even battle for the overall with the XC1 riders. Russell, way out of the Pacific Northwest in Washington, has found a home here in the east in GNCC Racing. Similar to one of our old stars named Jason Reigns, who now backs him with the Reigns Riding University, as well as Atlas Cycles. So there are a couple of things to watch here. Mullins was gone in the lead. There was a big battle between Duval, Russell, Wibley, Ashburn, and Ricky Russell from the second row. They get a time adjustment because they start late. They were all battling for second, third, fourth, fifth. So foregone conclusion, Charlie Mullins is going to win his second race of the year, and with it, take the points lead back. And he's certainly happy about that. Celebrates with a classic wheelie, the hot rod, back on top today in GNCC Racing. But here's the battle everyone wanted to see. Duval and Russell for second on the track with the other Russell, Ricky Russell, in contention for this position on time adjustment. Look how close it was riding the wide bike through the last couple of corners. Duval would later admit he was pretty darn tired. He did everything he could to keep Caleb Russell behind him, and he does. He takes second. Russell very frustrated in third. A valiant comeback. But when you're the champ of the series, you finish third in the race, you're only thinking about the fact that you lost points to your teammate, Charlie Mullins. Wibley was fourth in the class. If we look at the Amsoil XC1 class results, Stuart Baylor, a nice ride for fifth. But Ricky Russell, his first ever win in XC2 on adjusted time, fourth overall. Very impressive. We'll be right back. What do you call a machine that combines precision engineered handling, industry leading power, and a rider-focused design. We call it a Can-Am. From the essentials to fully loaded, you'll find that same combination in every ATV and side-by-side -side we build. And right now, get your own for as low as $149 a month. Can-Am, the ride says it all. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. By Rocky Mountain ATV MC. and by Can-Am. We mentioned the top of the show, we race all kinds of stuff here at the Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series. Let's look at our Can-Am 4x4 Pro Class recap from Saturday morning. New class this year, we've taken the best of all the 4x4 divisions and put them on the track together, and it has resulted in, I think, the best racing of any class all year. Robert Smith leading the way early, Brian Buchanan right there with him, they're mixed in with some of the sport quads also that are uh, racing with them on adjusted time in the morning division. You also got to watch for Rick Checo, Jordan Phillips, who has won a couple of races already this year, but he would run into mechanical problems. And Michael Swift, also a veteran, uh, multi-time champion of the different 4x4 divisions. Kevin Trantham started this race fourth on lap one, would take the lead on lap two. Rick Checo here on the Polaris, though, not letting him go. It was great racing as usual in this class. But Trantham had a little something extra today, and he takes the victory. Robert Smith was third. Now, the grand finale, our ATV Pro Race. It is really heating up. Chris Borich up to third. Adam McGill, you remember, was in that position before. He had a big crash. He and Borich actually collided and put McGill on the ground. So now the pieces of bread are two Suzuki's, and you got a Yamaha as the meat in the sandwich. Nope. Now you got two pieces of bread with some meat on the bottom. As they've gotten around Walker Fowler, that is not going to sit well with him. So Boric, as he always does, methodically putting himself in position as we approach the white flag. He was about fifth and fourth, third, second, now trying to get around his good buddy Chris Bithel, and he does it. Chris Boric in the lead. It's the textbook way to win GNCCs, and the thing is, the book is open. These guys can see the pages right in front of them, and Fowler knows it. You've got to try to turn the trick on Boric late. He gets around Bithel. Bithel hopping over rocks, logs, and everything else, trying to get Fowler back, but to no avail. So for about an hour and a half, Chris Bithel led this thing. Boric dropped the hammer. Fowler is going with him. We'll see if Boric can keep up. Or sorry, if Bithel can keep up, but these are long races, man. Anything can happen down the stretch. 
Fowler wants to beat Boric in the worst way, not just for points, but for momentum. Like I said at the top of the show, I don't think at any point Boric is worried about any of these riders. He feels he's the man. He's got the number one plate to prove it. As we watch McGill trying to make up time after that crash, maybe make a late bid for a podium. But it's up to Fowler now to knock off the champ. He wants to let Chris Boric know, I got the speed, I've got the endurance, I can beat you any day. And Bithel not out of it either. The fans are loving this action. Down the stretch we go. The question is, does Fowler have a passing spot picked out on this last lap to try to make the move? He's certainly close enough if he can find an opening. Oh, they're rubbing wheels now. And there's an alternate line, this hill climb. There's been action there all day, but look, Boric for the first time picks an inside line to the left. Oh, and he just gets out in front of Fowler. Wide open into the fields. There's dust. Fowler's gonna have to choke on that. Like days of thunder, you gotta drive through the smoke. Time is running out. We're into these final corners you saw in the bike race with Duval holding off Caleb Russell. Is there an opening? Is there anything Fowler can do? He's trying to go outside to inside. He's out of time. Another win for Chris Boric. And it's as close as you can get. The rider who's on top of GNCC Racing and the rider who wants so desperately to be next in line. But he's second in the line right now. Good sportsmanship between these two as they shake hands. Bithel, a lot of laps led today. He will still be up on the podium third place. I don't know if he's gonna be disappointed or happy about that. Either way, they're probably all tired first. They gotta sort that out. And then they'll think about the results later. Amsoil brings in the standings. Brian Wolf, a nice run for fifth. Neil Henthorn, Merritt, Johnny G. Johnny Gallagher inside the top 10. Kevin Yoho rounds it out. Here's your Amsoil race recap. Looked like Adam McGill in red was going to get the whole shot, but no, Chris Bithel around the outside. Grabs it, and he would take advantage. Pull a nice little gap as everyone settled in, learned the track, figured out the pace for the day. Walker Fowler was third behind McGill. No sign of the champion. Chris Boric early. His top three riders started to battle it out, and now Boric gets into the picture, and then he methodically worked his way into the lead. Walker Fowler did everything he could to get him back in the last lap. To no avail, the champion is still on top. NCC Racing. For everyone at Racer TV, I'm Jason Wigand. Thanks for watching.